Good morning and welcome to worship at the Jasper United Methodist Church. It is good to be together on this wonderful Sunday morning. I'm remind you to like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. A few things let me share with you. It's a new month, so be looking for a new newsletter to come out pretty soon uh, concerning the things going on in November. I encourage you to find that newsletter and find a place to be involved in the ministry here at the Jasper United Methodist Church. Here's a few opportunities to remind you of today. Uh, first off, our Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes. It is that time of year again. Uh, you can see the display out in the entrance area. If you would like to be a part of this ministry, you're welcome to pick one up. Instructions and information is there. You can also uh, donate money for the shoe boxes or you can donate items. If you're going to donate items, those are due in back here at the church by November the 9th. If you take a box and fill it, you need to bring it back to the church by the 12th of November. That information's in the bulletin in front of you, so please be aware of that. If you're at home, you can call the church office and answer, get it, questions answered about that as well. Wednesday night dinners are going well. You need to call the church office tomorrow before noon to make your reservation. Our November, November CARES donations are flour, sugar, and coffee. You can bring those each week. Place them in the CARES corner out in the entrance area, and, you, and we'll make sure they get to CARES. Elevate, our Sunday evening youth group, are looking for adult leaders to, to assist in, um, in the Sunday evening Elevate uh, with discussion and mentorship. If you have questions about that, please reach out to Anna Faith. Information, her email address is there in the bulletin as well. Uh, you can reach out to the church office as well. Our marriage enrichment group will be meeting Saturday, November the 11th at 6 p.m. here in our, in our sanctuary. You're invited to come and be a part of that. Uh, there will be uh, dinner and nursery available upon request. Dinner is going to be served regardless. Uh, nursery is upon request. Uh, but I'd love for you to come, you give me a call or send me an email. Let me know that you are attending. That way I've got plenty of food. And also we will know whether or not you need a nursery. So please uh, let us know. Also today is Georgia Retired Educators Day. Uh, please be aware of that. Um, it, it's an honor to many, honors many men and women who've dedicated their lives to education. I want to encourage you to uh, always thank a teacher, both active and retired, uh, for all that they do for our community. Last week, we shared about our joyful gifts. Our stewardship month was in October. Uh, there are um, commitment cards available. They're on the ushers table. Or maybe you picked one up last week and you are prepared to bring it in today if that's the case. You're invited during our time of offering to place it in the baskets that are here on the altar rail this morning. Or you can place it in the tithe and offering box that is found on the ushers table in the back. A couple of more things to make you aware of for the week. Thursday is a big day around here, or this coming Thursday is. Our United... Methodist men will meet at 6 p.m. Uh, here for dinner at 6 o'clock. And our, we have two groups of United Women of Faith. They changed their name. So it takes me a lot to think through that process to make sure I get the name right. The United Women of Faith. Uh, we have a group that meets, I believe it's 10 o'clock Thursday morning. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it's 10 o'clock Thursday morning. And then the other group meets at 6 p.m. on Thursday evening. That's this coming week. As we gather as God's people this morning, as we prepare to share in our opening hymn, you are reminded that during that opening hymn, you're, all, you're welcome to bring your gift to tithe and offering. Place it in the offering plates that are here on the altar rail this morning. If you're at home and you have questions about how you can be Supportive of the ministry here at the Jasper United Methodist Church, please reach out to the church office. We'll be glad to answer those phone calls for you. And also be able to answer your question if you'd like a, to receive a commitment card. We can email one to you. So please um, reach out to the office. We'll be glad to answer those questions. As we prepare to begin with our opening hymn, I invite you to stand and greet one another. Greet one another with the grace of God today.
I invite you to join me as we share together in giving thanks to God for our tithe and offering this day. Gracious, loving, and almighty God, we come now into your presence. Lord, we pray that you will receive our gift of tithe and offering to bring honor and glory to you. And gracious God, we pray that you will bless them and send them into the world, that others will come to know your grace. For this we pray in your gracious and holy name. Amen. Please be seated. You may be seated.
You may have noticed a little different sound this morning. If you haven't noticed a different sound, you may have noticed that there's a new Zimbelstern. Did I get that right, Angela? Yep. On the wall here that helps you know that there's something new in the sanctuary. And a few weeks ago, it was shared that, a, that we'd been able to pursue and replace the organ. And so it's an honor and a privilege this morning to spend a little time consecrating our organ for all that it will do, for all the music that it will share in the years to come. And we were, a few of us have been talking a little bit and how fitting it was that it would be today on what we celebrate is All Saints Sunday. For the number of years that donations have been made in memory of loved ones toward the purchase of this organ. So I invite you this morning as we share together in this consecration, I invite you to share with me as we share responsively in a consecration of this organ. We present this organ to be consecrated to the glory of Almighty God and for the service in this congregation. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to, to your name, O Most High. To declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. To the music of the lute and the harp. To the melody of the lyre. For you, O oh Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. Let us pray. Eternal God, whom the generations have worshipped through the gift of music. Accept our praise to you in the sound of this instrument, which we consecrate in your name and to your glory. Grant that its music may be a blessing to all who worship here, and that they may be consecrated to you, whose sound has gone out through all the earth, whose words to the end of the world. Let our music be so joined with your holy word that your glory may surround us and empower us for the service to which you call us in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord this day. Amen, amen. and amen. We are very fortunate and very blessed and I am thankful to every person who made a donation through the years to make this happen. After the first of the year, we will have a very special event to dedicate this organ and have an opportunity for all of us and all who would like to come and join us here to, to hear the full fullness of what is here and what this organ will do. So we encourage you to keep that, keep looking for that information. It'll be after the first of the year, and uh, it'll be scheduled, and uh, everyone will be invited to come and be a part of that wonderful, wonderful event. Today we are thankful for the opportunity to consecrate it to God, that it will be used to bring God honor and glory for sure. As I said earlier, this is All Saints Sunday. All Saints Sunday typically falls and is celebrated the Sunday before or the Sunday after November 1st. November 1st is All Saints Day. In the United Methodist Church, we take this opportunity to remember all of those who have passed away since last November 1st who are members of the congregation. To remember them today, I will read their names and NATO will sound the bell for each person and we 
take a moment to remember these. I encourage you also to consider those that you love, that you have lost. The saints in our lives that have helped us get to where we are, help make us who we are in the presence of God. So as we share this time together, I encourage you to take a, a, a position of prayer as we remember those members of our congregation who have passed away since last November 1st. Tim Butler. Karen Cole. Judy Lawrence. Sally Long. June Rambler. Larry Ritter. Don Warner. Lucy Young. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these whom we see no more. For these who now sit at your feet, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to have known, to have shared worship time, to have shared service time with each and every one of them here in this place. Lord, we thank you for all the saints who have gone before us and have helped us become who we are. Lord, now we lift before you in our own hearts and minds those that we remember this day. Lord, may we remember them. May they bring a smile to our face, joy to our hearts. For Lord, they were your people. And they now sit at your feet. For this we pray this day in your gracious and holy name. Amen. This morning as we spend time in prayer together, I encourage you to spend some time praying for those that we have just mentioned. Pray for those that you held in your heart. And this morning, I want to bring up before you the word sanctification. That's one of those big religious words. You know, they teach it to me in seminary. You know, I have to use them every once in a while to show that I actually did go to school. But sanctification is that important part of who we are. When we contemplate the different, with the different graces, we talk about prevenient grace, justifying grace, sanctifying grace sanctifying grace is that beginning is that is that time in our life once we've reached justification sanctifying grace is what goes with us it's the grace that continues to grow us continues to nurture us continues to bring us closer to what God has called us to be so this morning as we spend just a moment in prayer I want us to contemplate sanctification so I invite you to join me as we pray gracious loving and almighty God we come now into your presence on this Sunday morning and Lord we thank you for who you are we thank you for this opportunity of worship Lord we are thankful for all the saints that have made a difference in our life and we do lift them before you this day Gracious God, as the members of the Jasper United Methodist Church, we also come before you today and we contemplate the word sanctification, your sanctifying grace that goes with us from day to day and helps us 
to grow in our relationship with you. Lord, help us. Help us to think about that today. Lord, we are thankful for the opportunity of worship to come into your presence and to receive Holy Communion. Lord, we ask your blessings to be upon us as we contemplate this day. Lord, we also come with all these things going on in the world around us, Lord. Things that we don't understand, things that don't make sense to us. And Lord, we ask that you would help us in these times. Help us to realize your presence. Help us to know that you are there. And gracious God, as we contemplate the things that are going on in the world around us, we are reminded that you call us to love our enemies. It's not an easy thing to do, Lord, but, but you call us to do that. Loving our enemies do not mean that they are right. It does not mean that we don't stand firm. But at the same time, Lord, we are reminded when we love them that they are also loved by you. Lord, help us in the midst of that struggle in our lives. And with all the things going on in the world around us, and the things that affect our communities and beyond, Lord, we seek your guidance. Help us to know that there is one greater than all of these things. No matter the storm, you are greater. For Lord, we come and we bring all of this and so much more into your presence on this day. As we share together in the prayer that your son taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
another wonderful Sunday of music we have had, for sure. Very thankful, very blessed for all that we have heard, for all that we have experienced. I know many of you may not know this, but music is a large part of who I am and what I do. I'm not as nearly as talented and gifted as what we have around us, but it brings such joy into my life. Music can also bring encouragement. Music can also just be with us when we're just a down, just down and, and sad. And it can help us deal with those emotions within our lives. I know not everybody finds it that way. But it is a part of the blessings that I believe God adds to my life. And I am thankful. And I think it's important to say thank you. And to give thanks to God for every opportunity that I get to experience talented musicians sharing in such a way in worship. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This morning's text comes from 1 John. <clears throat> 1 John 3, 1 through 7. I'm reading from the Common English Bible. I invite you to join me as we share together in 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what kind of love the Father has given to us in that we should be called God's children and that and that is what we are because the world didn't recognize him it doesn't recognize us dear friends now we are God's children and it hasn't yet appeared what we will be we know that when he appears we will be like him because we'll see him as he is and all who have this hope in him purify themselves even as he is pure. Every person who practices sin commits an act of rebellion, and sin is rebellion. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and there is no sin in him. Every person who remains in a relationship to him does not sin, and any person who sins has not seen him or known him. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The person who practices righteousness is righteous in the same way that Jesus is righteous. We give thanks to God for the reading and the hearing of these words found in 1 John as we pray. Gracious and almighty God, as we consider the words of 1 John this morning, open our hearts and our minds to experience your presence. Help us to leave better able to be your disciples. For this we pray this day in your gracious and holy name. Amen. I look out on the congregation this morning and I think most of you will have some connection with my first illustration. Some, it's, I got to explain a little more than I used to because it's something that we don't, actually see happening a whole lot. And it has to do with film developing. You know, in the age where our phone has become our camera and takes our pictures of the world, there are very few folks who still use film. It's hard to find. Gregory actually took a class at Reinhardt and they took actual pictures with film. I, and it was hard to find. You had to order it online. There were not very many places that still sell that kind of film. So what I want us to get to is this understanding of film developing. I actually took a class in college as well and went to a dark room and took care of you know, the negatives and making all of that and keeping it and letting just so much light and all of that and all the chemicals. You know, When you put it on a piece of paper, then it's got to go through these chemical baths right? If you've never done that before, it's interesting. I enjoyed it. And we learned the importance of the time, how long it stayed in each chemical, and how you had to move it through. And if you didn't do it right, the picture didn't look quite right. 
You could do other things to get a different kind of effect. And all of those things. It takes time. You know? It is something that it just doesn't happen like it does today. When you take a picture with your phone, there it is. It's right there in front of you. Lydia was talking about all the pictures she had on her, on her phone and the fact that she was running out of memory. Y'all run into that problem? <laughs> running out of memory to keep the pictures. And I said, well, there's two choices. You either get rid of the pictures to make more room or you consider purchasing more space for the pictures or you just see how much it's going to cost you to have them all printed out. Guess what? We got more space on our telephone for holding pictures, you know. Developing film takes time. It's a process. Process. If you don't do the process correctly, if you don't give it the time that it needs, it doesn't come out quite right. Well, that is one of those things I think about when I think about sanctification. When I think about sanctifying grace in our lives. As I said earlier, in the United Methodist Church, in the Wesleyan tradition, we speak of three types of grace. We speak of prevenient grace. That is the grace that goes before. That is the grace that is at work in our life from the moment we are a person. From the moment we are a being. Grace is at work already. That's God seeking to bring us into relationship with God. That is what we celebrate when we do baptisms. Is prevenient grace. Justifying grace is that moment when that prevenient grace finally clicks inside of our heads and hearts. When that grace has been at work in our life, all of a sudden it shows itself to us and we understand it a little bit, enough to receive it, to ask for it. Justifying grace is what takes place when we are saved, to use a good old Christian word. When we are saved, we are made right with God. We are justified. It is justifying grace at work there. Now once that happens in our life, God does not stop working on us with grace. From that point forward, it's sanctifying grace. And that's where we are today. In this conversation about sanctifying grace. John Wesley says that sanctifying grace is that work within us that is moving us toward perfection in love. It is moving us toward perfection in love. Meaning that we learn as we get to know God, as we grow closer to Christ, we begin to understand better what His love looks like, what it feels like, what it is in our life. We're moving toward perfection. A change in a person's life at repentance is not magic. It doesn't just, and everything's okay. We've all been there, right? You know? It does change us. It does affect us. It does help us become the person God calls us to be. But it still takes work. It takes energy. It takes this relationship with God for it to continue we grow or we develop a relationship with God. Someone stated it this way. They said, when a person becomes a Christian, he usually undergoes some radical life changes. Especially if he has had an immoral background. Through the first steps of spiritual growth and self-denial, he gets rid of the large obvious sins. But sad to say, many believers stop there. They don't go on to eliminate the little sins that clutter their landscape of their life. This person goes on to recognize Gordon MacDonald and his book, Ordering Our Private World. And he tells this story. He told of an experience in his own life that illustrates this truth. It illustrates the fact that we, we aim at the first the obvious stuff. And then we kind of get into a mode of life and don't get rid of the small things. 
He said, some years ago when Gail and I bought an abandoned New Hampshire farm, we now call Peace Ledge, we found the site where we wished to build our country home strewn with rocks and boulders. It was going to take a lot of work to clear it all out. The first phase of the clearing process was easy. The big boulders went fast. And when they were gone, we began to see there were a lot of smaller rocks that had to go too. But when we had cleared the site of the boulders and the rocks, we noticed all of the stones and pebbles we had not seen before. This was much harder, more tedious work. But we stuck to it. And there came the day when the soil was ready for planting grass. You see, sanctification is a process that it helps at the beginning to remove the large and obvious, but it continues to work in our lives so that we begin to take away the small pebbles and the rocks that cause sin in our lives, that prevent us from truly being what God has called us to be, that stops and hinders the ability of us to grow in the understanding of being made perfect in God's love. Sanctification is a process. It's a process that a person goes through as they spend their time in relationship with God. And just as we talked with, about film, if we move, remove it from the solutions too soon in the development, the development is halted. If we remove ourselves from the presence of God, we fall prey to sin. Or as the a good old church word again. We've already talked about saving, being saved and salvation. Another word or phrase found in Christian church is backsliding. You know that word? We don't talk about that word very much. It doesn't come up in conversation. You know? It doesn't come up much in church. <clears throat> but it has a way of explaining a situation, right? It's kind of that thing that happens to us when we don't continue in that sanctification and, and remove those small pebbles and rocks of sin that cause us to, to turn our back sometimes on God, that cause us to, to kind of move away from God. And if we're not careful, that rock could be a boulder that we've moved back into our lives. We find ourselves at a place where sometimes we abandon our faith over it. Most of the time, though, it's those small pebbles and rocks that get in the way. And we have to turn and ask forgiveness. Seek a right relationship with God once more. And continue in our sanctification. The important thing to remember in the midst of all of this is that we are not done. We are not finished. I have run into so many people in my time in ministry who have no desire to continue to grow. They believe they've reached the end. And folks, I got news for you. There's only one way you reach the end. Your name has to be on the list that is read on All Saints Sunday. That's the only way that you reach the end. That's the only way we reach the end of our sanctification is that we stand at the feet of God. That is the only way to reach it. Until then, we are being sanctified. We are being, we are being molded. We are being remade every single day. Rocks and stones being removed from our lives so that we may be the understanding that God wants us to be. That we would be made perfect in love. We work at it. We work at it, and we work at it. And sometimes we still don't see evidence of that work. We ask questions like, I just don't know what God wants me to do. Or why is it so hard to be faithful sometimes? In the midst of all of that, we, under we need to understand that it is a process. And a process takes time. It takes patience. It takes work. It takes paying attention to God. 
It means paying attention to how God is calling us each and every day. The good news is we don't do it alone. You see, from the moment of prevenient grace in our lives, all the way through justifying grace into sanctifying grace, that is God at work. We're not in charge of grace. We don't tell it what to do. We are merely being worked by that grace. And we give ourselves over to it. So we're not alone. Philip Brooks was the former minister of Boston's Trinity Episcopal Church. He is perhaps best known as the author of O Little Town of Bethlehem. He was a very busy pastor, and yet he always seemed relaxed and unburdened, willing to take time for anyone in need. Shortly before Brooks's, Brooks died, a young friend wrote him and asked the secret of his strength and serenity. In a heartfelt response, Brooks credited his still growing relationship with Christ. He wrote these words. The more I have thought it over, the more sure it has seemed to me that these last years have had a peace and fullness which there did not used to be. It is a deeper knowledge and a truer love of Christ. I cannot tell you how personal this, this grows to me. He is here. He knows me and I know Him. It is the most real thing in the world, and every day makes it more real. And one wonders with delight what it will grow to as the years go on. You see, we're not alone. God is at work in the midst of that sanctification. God is there helping us grow and develop. We're the ones that put a stop to it from time to time. We're the ones that cause the struggles and the problems. God is still there. God is still working. God still is in desires for us to be in relationship with God. We must keep working at it. It takes time. For every person, it's different. There's no way for us to know no way for us to be aware of how it's changing our lives. It just does. The interesting thing about sanctification is you may not recognize that change has happened, but the people around you will recognize the change that has happened. John Wesley spoke of one person he believed reached perfection and love before they died and it was Francis Asbury one of the founders as well of the United of the Methodist United Methodist Church and John Wesley and Francis Asbury didn't always see eye to eye and yet John believed that he reached that pinnacle of being made perfect in love now Francis Asbury would have never ever admitted he would have told you he was still working on it. That he was still striving for it. But John Wesley saw it in him. It's a process. And we never stop. We continue to grow. Misty Mowray, she illustrates it this way. A man once bought a home with a tree in the backyard. It was winter and nothing marked the tree as different from any other tree. When spring came, the tree grew leaves and tiny pink buds. How wonderful, thought the man, a flower tree. I will enjoy its beauty all summer. But before he had time to enjoy the flowers, the wind blew and soon all the petals were strewn all over the yard. What a mess, thought the man. 
This tree isn't any use after all. The summer passed, and one day the man noticed the tree was full of green fruit the size of a large nut. He picked one and took a bite. Blah! He cried and threw it to the ground. What a horrible taste. This tree is worthless. Its flowers are so fragile the wind blows them away, and the fruit is terrible and bitter. When winter comes, I'm cutting it down. But the tree took no notice of the man and continued to draw water from the ground and warmth from the sun and in late fall produced crisp red apples. Some of us see Christians with their early blossoms of happiness and think they should be that way forever. Or we see bitterness in their lives and we're sure they will never bear the better fruit of joy. Could it be that we forget some of the best fruit ripens late? You see, it's a process. Relationship with God is a process. It doesn't start and end with justification, salvation. It starts there, but it doesn't end there. Sanctifying grace moves within our lives and helps us continue to grow in our understanding of who God is as we strive to be made perfect in love. As we strive to be made perfect in love. That very love that we celebrate with communion. That very love that brought Jesus to the cross that very love that changed our lives that very love that can change the world that's what we're striving for that's what we're working for that's what sanctifying grace is about we may not understand it now as our scripture said but when, when, when he appears, we will be like him, for we will know him as he is. That's what sanctification is all about. It's bringing us to a place that we will know the presence of Jesus when it's our turn to be on the list for All Saints Sunday. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, and almighty God, we are thankful. We are thankful for your presence in our life. We are thankful for your love, your grace, your forgiveness. We are thankful for the opportunity today to remember saints in our lives. Lord, help us to live in such a way that you will use us in the lives of others as well. Lord, help us to continue to lean into your sanctifying grace that we may be made perfect in your love, that our lives will be changed every day, and that, Lord, you will use us so that you can change the lives of others. For this we pray this day in your gracious and holy name. Amen. As I said, the love that we strive to be made perfect into is the love that was shown on the cross. It is the love that we, that we remember, that we acknowledge, that we celebrate with Holy Communion. It is a reminder of that presence. On the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples, he took bread. He gave thanks to God for it, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. In a similar way, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. And so we come today remembering the mighty acts of Jesus Christ. We come recognizing that we are not worthy, but we know that God is merciful. We know that He offers us forgiveness. We know that we are loved and that grace covers our lives. Let us pray together. Gracious, loving, and almighty God, we come now into your presence. And Lord, we come seeking your forgiveness. For Lord, we know that we have not been who you call us to be. We know, Lord, that we have made mistakes. We know, Lord, that there are rocks and stones that still need to be removed from our lives so that it looks and it looks and it is ready for your presence. Gracious God, we know that we are not worthy to gather the crumbs that fall from your table and yet you offer us mercy. Mercy with an invitation to sit at your table. Gracious God, we are thankful for that blessing. And we ask that you would be with us this day. That we would once again experience your grace. As we experience this sacrament. For this we pray in your gracious and holy name. Amen. This morning I want to invite those that I've asked to help serve communion today. I want to ask Anna Faith to come as well. I didn't get a chance to talk to her before worship, but <laughs> as they come and prepare to share to serve you in communion today, I remind us that in the United Methodist Church we share and serve an open table. That means you don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a member of any church. You simply must have a hunger and a thirst for Almighty God. For you see the beauty of communion in the United Methodist Church is that this does not belong to me. It does not belong to the church. It belongs to God. And God's table is open to all people. So you're invited to come to experience the grace of God, to be reminded of the love that He has for you, to be reminded that He works in our lives from the moment we are a being until the moment we sit at His feet. His grace is at work in our lives. Hopefully we are experiencing that and we want it there. But even if we don't, the beauty of God's grace is it's still at work. It's still at work. You see, prevenient grace will go to, with us to the grave if we do not give our lives over to God. It will go with us there because God will not give up on one single person. That's the beauty of prevenient grace. So this morning, you're invited to come and receive. We will receive communion this morning by intinction, which means you'll come forward, you'll have a piece of bread placed in your hand, you will dip it into the cup and receive communion that way. If you, would, if you are dietary need for gluten-free, I will be at the back of the church here underneath the cross serving communion for you there. You're welcome to come and receive communion however you feel today. Once you've received communion, you're welcome to spend time here at the altar in prayer to God this day. We'll come down the center aisle and we'll have two stations here on each side. You're invited. The table is set. You are invited. Come experience the presence of God today.
you please stand, we will join in singing at the river. just one last thing to share with you. If you find yourself this afternoon longing for more worship, I want to invite you to come and be part of our charge conference. We will be gathered at the Tate United Methodist Church with the Tate United Methodist Church members and the Hinton United Methodist Church members sharing in this once a year uh, meeting called a charge conference where we will celebrate the past, the 2023, and look forward to 2024 as a United Methodist congregation. Everybody's welcome to come and join us. It's just going to be the three United Methodist churches here in Pickens County. I think next year we may be doing charge conference just by us with us alone. So I would encourage you, if you've never been to one, come. We're going to have a, a nice worship service this evening. 630 Tate United Methodist Church would love to have you come and be a part of that. Now with our eyes to heaven, hear these words of benediction this day. As we leave this place, may we experience all the beauty that God has to show us in the week that is ahead. May we know the justifying grace that saves our lives that comes from His Son, Jesus Christ. And may the Holy Spirit, may the Holy Spirit help us to live in the midst of that sanctifying grace that changes us every day and helps us grow into the knowledge of the love and grace of God, both now and forevermore. Amen? Amen. Go in God's peace. Amen.